YouTube and welcome back to powder coating a Holly carburetor. This is the second part which is going to focus pretty much on the cleaning and actual powder coating of the sub assemblies and some of the little steps that I take to actually make the carburetor look even better. So at this point what we're going to do is go to our sandblast cabinet and we'll just take a look at what's inside here. You'll notice that the main body, float bowls, base plate, and the accelerator pump housings are currently in the blast cabinet. What I'd like to do is put everything together and blast them and separate them as to the color they're going to be coated in. So these are going to be done in a blue, and then the accelerator shafts and some of the other little pieces will be done in a uh, almost chrome color. So, I'm going to actually turn the camera off and do the sandblasting because when the compressor starts and all the other noise, it's just going to be really hard to hear. But I will start again and show you what's going on as soon as these pieces are cleaned. So, this is what everything looks like after it's been in the blast cabinet and it looks clean and ready to go. So, the next step is going to actually be taking them, putting them in the oven baking them about 450 degrees for 45 minutes to an hour. Non-ferrous metal likes to suck up anything that's dirty or grimy or oily so baking it out keeps it from coming out of the pores after you've put the powder on creating bubbles and other things. So one of the other things that you need to be aware of is that when you powder coat, you're going to be getting the base metal up to a certain temperature, depending on the powder, and then cooking it for a prescribed time amount, depending, again, on the powder itself. So, normally when I'm powder coating, I'll do the base plate, the bowls, and the accelerator pump covers together, and then the main body, which is a much heavier piece of metal, and does take a lot longer to get up to temperature will be done alone by itself on a separate process. So what I like to use is just an old cookie sheet and I'll put the items on here. And this is just for baking so if they get close and touch it's not a big deal. We're just trying to make sure we get all the gas out of them, all the oil and dirt. One word of advice, guys, don't go running into the kitchen, grab a pan, run out in the garage, throw it in the oven, and then powder coat with it, because inevitably it will be your wife's favorite, and then you're going to be in deep cookie sheet. So, I'm going to go ahead and throw these in the oven, and I'll be back in an hour after everything has outgassed, I guess we could say, and... Um, when we get it all done, I'm going to put all my little covers and tape and get everything ready so we don't get powder where we don't want it. Uh, it's very easy to do. Powder is very, very fine, and when you spray it on, it tends to kind of go wherever it wants, including places you don't want it to be. So a little extra tape, a little extra time doesn't hurt. Be back in a second. Okay, so while we're waiting for the parts to cook, let's go ahead and get uh, the powder out of the can that it ships in and we will put that into a labeled container that actually goes onto the powder coat gun. So one thing I highly recommend is if you start doing powder coating make sure you label everything that the powder goes into. It's amazing how many colors look almost identical and if you grab the wrong one you end up with something that you thought was going to be silver and it turns out to be silver vein with a heavy black in it. So, we're just going to take a little funnel here, make sure it doesn't go everywhere, and we don't want the desiccant in there, so put that back off to the side. And I like to fill them about, yeah, a little more than half full maybe. That gives me a lot of spraying time. 
that's probably about eight ounces that you're going to get in there, which is more than enough to do a single carburetor. But you can see the dust flying everywhere. This powder is extremely fine and it's highly recommended to wear protection. Uh, breathing mask, dust mask, even a painting mask because as I said earlier this is very very fine and gets everywhere. So now that we've got the powder in and we've got a pretty good amount in there let's put the cap on it for now and you can see the powder just gets everywhere it's all clean and beautiful on the uh, outside here you'll notice that there's two different colors Caswell is the company I bought it from and it's US blue is the actual color but since I'm doing this for Calvert Precision Engines and it's going to be used in their dyno shop I figured I'd call it Calvert Blue around my shop so that uh, I know which one to grab when I'm going to do it. Or powder coat with it, sorry. We are back and we have got a, ourselves a fresh batch of hot cooked carburetor. So what we're going to do now is get this all taped off and blocked off so we don't get powder coating in places we don't want it. Uh, it's a nice finish, it's durable. Although when it gets into places you don't want it, it's not a lot of fun trying to get it off. So, over the years doing these, I've come up with some different types of block-offs and covers, such as bowl block-offs, main body. These are just eighth inch aluminum, and it's a lot easier just to reuse these pieces than to have to tape up every single carburetor every time. And what we're going to do is, these are for inlets, fuel inlets on the bowls. And we've got some more here for the base plate and the bottom of the carburetor. We've also got different types of tape. We've got silicone tape, the blue, also called blue masking tape. It's a high temperature tape, about 600 degrees. And we've got fiberglass tape. Again, this is another type of tape that will not bake off and you can cover your pieces up when you powder coat, leave them on and put them in the oven. And some things like for the needle and seat, I just took an old needle and seat, took the o-ring off, put a screw in the top and that will cover the top of the bowl to keep powder from going in there. Use some old accelerator pump covers to block off the accelerator pump part of the bowl and just some old fuel bowl sight plugs to block off that area. So I'm going to shut the camera off because this is long, tedious, boring work and I'll come back after I've got all but the uh, main body because that will be done separately because of the heaviness of the metal. Uh, but I'll, when everything else is done, ready to go, I'll come back and we'll do some powder coating finally after all this prep and uh, see how it turns out. This is actually kind of a new color for me, so I'm excited to see what it looks like myself. I'll be back. We are back with everything ready for the final powder coating. You can take a look here. We we'll see all the holes and places that are covered with different plates and silicon plugs. It's a lot easier to plug these off than to try and re-thread everything after the powder gets in there. So take a lot of care to make sure that where we don't want powder is definitely taken care of. So what I'm going to do is take all these pieces over to the oven I'm going to transfer them to a little bit bigger cookie sheet because I want to be able to get around all the pieces of the uh, each of the sub-assemblies and get a good solid coating of powder on everything. So I'm going to take you over to the oven next time this comes back on and we will start with the powder coating process finally. Well, everything's moved over to the bigger cookie sheet now. You can see I've got a lot more room to make sure that 
when I've got the gun I can move around and get the powder everywhere I need it. Uh, just a quick rundown, I'm just using an old kitchen oven. When we remodeled the kitchen I drug this out here. It is uh, used for powder coating only. Once you use an oven, do not ever use it for food again. It can be poisonous. And over here just a little bit of some of the powdering, powder coating supplies. And down here is the actual powder coating unit that attaches to the gun that I will be shooting with. So I'm going to move this over to back to the tripod, get dressed up and ready to go, and we will start shooting some powder.
this point, it's the uh, pieces have been in the oven for about 10 minutes, 11 minutes now. So what I'm going to do is use a thermal gun to check the temperature of the part itself. What I want is it to be about 350 degrees with the powder starting to melt so I can start the timer for it to cure for 15 minutes once it hits approximately 350 degrees. So it looks like the powder has all melted and the parts are up to temp and they look really nice so let's go ahead and set the timer for 15 minutes and when they come out we will be done with these pieces and we can get to the main body. Wow. Okay, so here are the pieces uh, out of the oven. Cover's taken off, and I tell you, I really like this color. Everything turned out just perfect. So now it's off to the main body. That's going to take a little more work because of the Faraday cage effect. There's going to be some spots in there that do not take powder. So what I'll normally do is I'll try and shoot the powder in without the electric charge to try and fill those gaps. And if that doesn't work, I'll put the part in the oven, let it just go to melting, pull it out of the oven, mix up what's called liquid to powder, which is a um, solution that you mix with the powder itself. Then you can paint the powder on. It's kind of a, a little paste thick paint type of a, uh, arrangement when it's done and you just paint it in there where you need it to cover up those little tiny spots let it dry finish baking it and it turns out just wonderful so we'll get with the center section and see how that turns out okay so what we're going to do I can actually grab the tape is tape off the top edge. It's kind of not necessary, but it helps powder from going inside of the throttle bores when spraying. So this is where I like to use the fiberglass tape. It's a little easier to work with. And just run it up against the edge. And having a hobby nice handy handy or a straight edge razor blade either one works equally well but um, I guess it's a lot of personal preference as to what you use some people even use uh, big utility knives the key to it is to make sure that it is sharp All the other covers are on. I'll just put this cap on and make sure we've got the tape engaged. And off to the powder cover counting. <laughs> powder coating it goes. Well, the main body is in the oven cooking. So while that's in there, I'm going to prepare these pretty much all steel parts to be powder coated, but first they're going to need to be sandblasted. Uh, one thing I don't do is I don't blast the shaft itself, 
So to protect it in the blast cabinet, just a little bit of duct tape and just avoid the area and it'll be just fine. I've never had a problem. One other thing to be aware of if you have the means is on a standard Holley 4150 throttle shaft, you'll notice that the linkage piece or the linkage adapter piece on the shaft is just pressed on or hammered to the shaft. It's just a piece of metal that when they slide it on they hammer it in and that holds it in place. Which if everything is done perfectly that's not a problem. Although I have seen guys use big Gorilla return springs and that constant pressure pulling on the shaft or maybe if the linkage is not properly adjusted and the carburetor is at full throttle but the pedal is not all the way to the floor, the extra pressure pulling on the linkage over time will loosen this up and you'll start getting wobble on the linkage. You know, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, but just to make sure, what I'm going to do is I'll take the TIG welder and I'll just run a bead around this edge here and that'll be enough to keep it from coming loose in the future, keep it clocked exactly where it needs to be I've seen them welded when they were loose and they don't get them right so the car never idles quite right or the linkage doesn't set up right. Just a little problem so as long as it's tight might as well weld it now. And I think I've changed my mind on the color. Originally I said I was going to use a, an almost chrome on this but looking at the color of the bowls and the base plate so far I think what I'm going to do is use a color called almost, um, cast aluminum. It'll give it a little bit more of a subtle look, and I think it'll look a lot better, so hopefully <laughs> I'll have to strip it all down and do it again. So off to the blast cabinet I go. Okay, so we got all the metal pieces or the steel pieces that we're going to use on the carburetor blasted, and when I took the duct tape off, I replaced it with a fiberglass tape to uh, put it in the oven. Once you see the price of the fiberglass tape, you know you're not going to want to use a lot of it if you can help it because it is kind of expensive, relatively expensive. So really great cheap alternative is aluminum foil. It comes on a big roll. Um, you can go steal that out of your wife's kitchen. Just don't let her know about it. Maybe just steal a few pieces off and take them out to the shop with you. But they uh, does a great job. It's made for the oven and that's where this stuff is going. As you can see it's kind of like hanging ornaments. You just kind of figure where everything will fit, where you can get the powder gun into it. Use a stainless steel wire. You can get it by the one pound coil, last for years. Or just get a small piece of it from a buddy if it's laying around. Hang it all up, ground it, powder coat it, throw it in the oven. It'll come out looking great. So off to the oven we go. One of the things I really enjoy about doing carburetors is that you can do as much or as little as you want during a rebuild. As you'll notice on this, some of the pieces I've done off camera, the metering blocks I just took and polished them on a bench polisher. It took maybe 15 minutes and I'll put a little bit of uh, shark hide on them to protect the, the finish. The springs on the accelerator pumps pump arms. I polished those also. On the accelerator pump covers I took the pushed the um, eighth inch roll pin out of the arm so I could do the arm itself in the uh, cast aluminum and of course the cover itself is done in the same blue. It's just that kind of you know whatever individuality you want to put into it. I'm going to upgrade to the nicer new uh, hex headed bolts and of course little things like a new screw for the needle and seat new screws for the side hole plugs and just you know of course all the new gaskets and such but just little things that I think overall make it look like a much better carburetor so Again, you can do as much as you want or as little. It's all up to you. 